wise elder once told me, no one knows everything. The more you learn, the more questions you have for the answers that you receive. That always stuck with me. I believe it's important to understand who we are as individual human beings. And I believe it starts by knowing where we come from as a culture, an ethnicity, and as a spiritual collective. And I believe this is done through one's historical heritage. Me being a male, I had to follow the bloodline of my father. And it took me all the way to Africa. Spread throughout mostly border countries on the continent. Of some of the world's oldest tribes. Before Osiris and the gods of Egypt. Before Yeshua and the great wars of David. Before Krishna and the great Arjun. There was the Nomo. And if my studies throughout the years have been correct, the no more are the ones who started it all. A story that's been told by the elders, by their elders, who were also told by their elders, and so on, is a story more magnificent than any other story on the planet. A story that teaches us understanding, sacrifice, and how imperative it is for knowledge and truth to be shared. South Africa, 20,000 years ago. On a regular hot scorching day in the motherland, an unplanned event is about to take place. And it will change the hearts and minds of the young men and women of Africa forever. As the hunters hear a cracking in the clouds, they see a huge through object descending from the clouds. With lights and shapes protruding all around it. As the object reached closer to the ground, it began to act as a magnet to seawater. The water began to rush through valleys and through pathways, only to fill up directly under the object. No one appeared to be exiting the object, and the object just sat and hovered. It's said that the object hovered for days, and as this time passed, an unknown amount of Africans began to gather around the object. It's said that Africans came from all over the continent to gather around the object. You gotta imagine in those days, those times, how hard it was to comprehend what they was actually seeing. Just standing there probably struck, but it said that some of the ancestors were afraid, some amazed, and some even more curious. The object drew hundreds, thousands even, of different tribesmen and women from around the continent. Some hid behind huge rocks, and some watched from mountain peaks. After a few days, the object stopped. The Africans waited as the door to this object slowly opened. Once opened, a line of people walked out in a single file line. These people looked nothing like human beings in the face, but they were humanoids who walked like us, but their feet were webbed as well as their hands. The only comparison that could be made by the ancestors at that time were that they had the face of fishes. Wherever these beings came from, they seemed to have been in pain because it said some walked crouched over as they walked down the gangplank. It's also said that each being was carrying a stick and the light at the end of each of these sticks protruded colors, red, green, yellow, and purple. One of these beings wore a king-style crown on its head with a large stone in the center, and it said that this stone shined bright as the sun. 
it was obvious then that this was the leader. As the leader began to climb to the top of the gangplank, some of the Nomo began to swim playfully under the object where the water had gathered. The creature exposed his hand and waved his stick in a gesture and began to speak. And I quote, people of this world, we are the Nomo people. We come from the star of Kiri Dawu. We come from the star of the Red Dog. Listen to our words. Because we have been sent by a very high one in a very high place to make certain truths known to you. Unquote. The people stared and listened closely as this intelligent creature spoke. The leader of the Nomo spoke for days, teaching Africans everything that we now know about the stars and the planets surrounding us, our own planet, and the secrets of the cosmos. Teaching Africans the origins of humanity on Earth. The Nomo, taught, the Nomo taught us that we were once a part of a great cluster of stars and was the leader of all beings in the galaxy. Us human beings were once part of a collective of beings who interacted with each other in the stars. But it seemed that history repeats itself because the Nomo also taught us that human beings became so extremely aggressive towards other beings and intelligent creatures. And keep in mind that this story here was told to the Africans 20,000 years ago. So the story of us being part of a great collective had to be thousands of years before that. The Nomo said that we were so hostile that several worlds had joined forces against us and that this caused a great war where several races fought and pushed us out of what is called the Great Star Flower. So it says several races joined together, banned against us, fought and pushed us out of what is called the Great Star Flower, driving us out with us ending up here in our solar system, seeking refuge on, seeking refuge on Earth, They continue to explain to the African ancestors that there are many races amongst the galaxies. Some who are intelligent, fragile beings that kept us under constant watch to make sure that we never reach the point where we become a threat to the cosmos again. But the Nomo ensured that if we can cure ourselves of selfishness, hatred, disease, and war, then the other races who inhabit these worlds will once again embrace us. The leaders then taught us Africans that we must protect and take care of the earth in which we live. And we should never dig and destroy our planet. Because our planet was made specifically for us to breathe and sustain life. And once we reach a certain level of peace and enlightenment, then we will once again spread out to the stars as part of the family in the cosmos. Now, when I first learned of this, I thought to myself, this sounds like the same knowledge and guidance that's taught throughout religions and beliefs all over the world. Just another piece of evidence that shows you we all connected. The leader of the Nomo continued to speak speaking more with concern, and I quote, Earth-dwelling brothers and sisters, you must understand who you really are. You must understand how great you are and how great you once were. And you must know that any living being that does not spread to the stars sooner or later dies out. And if you, brothers and sisters, don't follow us to the dark spaces above. Then you too shall exterminate your world and eventually exterminate yourselves. 
And this planet, which is a warm life breeding planet, will once again be empty of living things. Unquote. After the leader spoke for days, giving knowledge, it said that a frightening and unfamiliar thing happened. The leader of the Nomo is said to have presented a device. No one knows if a button was pressed or whether a timer was set. But the leader then destroyed itself with this device. The Nomo leader's then lifeless body fell down the gangplank. After his body fell, other Nomo members came out and began taking the creature apart. Pieces from this creature was then cut and made into smaller pieces, and a sacred fire was made. At this point in the historical African story, it said that a number of Africans were chosen to take part in a feast with several of the Nomo. When I read this, I had to think to myself, before I became too judgmental, maybe on these other planets, this is how they honor their dead. Or maybe on these other planets, this is how they gain more knowledge. I just continued to try to learn unbiasedly. Once the pieces were shared, the Nomo announced that a female Nomo would now be the leader of their expedition. She presented herself and spoke, and I quote, By this gesture, do we, who come from the star of the red dog, seal a pact between ourselves and you human beings. By this gesture, do we promise this, that if you get rid of war amongst yourselves, if you get rid of arrogance and quarrelsomeness, banish disease and bid farewell to hunger and poverty, then we the Nomo shall return. And then we the Nomo shall take you by the hand and lead you human beings to the throne of the stars. These teachings and promises from the Nomo sound similar to the promises made in Hindu, Muslim, Judaic, Catholic, and other religions. Just a thought. It's said that the Nomo was only seen one time throughout history in Africa. And it's said that they would never visit this earth again until we fulfill the list of retrifications and are spiritually purified. This contact that took place in Africa is not only exclusive to the Dogon and Zulu tribes. This is a story told all throughout Africa. This is a belief through all tribes. And could it be that specific Africans were chosen to take part in the dining and the bonding with the Nomo? Because it explains that thousands of tribes, men and women were there, I would think maybe the chosen ones were the kings and the leaders of these tribes. It's said that the Nomo hovered for days before contact. One difference that I noticed, if you pay attention to each tale of the visitors, some seem to be fish people and some seem to be lizard reptile people. But one thing that's for sure, each tribe was left with the same instructions from these beings. And it went like this. Even the human beings are here to gain knowledge. And once knowledge is obtained, by no means should humans use that knowledge to destroy the earth in which we live. The Nomo also explained to us Africans that many years ago in the past, millions of years even, that tons of thousands of worlds were destroyed by its own inhabitants, meaning even far deep, deep in space, other beings have made the same mistakes that we're making today. And they said, even though these creatures of these worlds were intelligent, through stupidity and rampant ambition, caused each planet to be destroyed. So in your search for knowledge, never destroy the earth in which is your mother. When it all boils down, I guess this makes sense in the ancient past uh, when Africans made contact with people from other nations and countries that they didn't have a huge storage of gems and metals. 
They were forbidden by these teachers who came from the stars not to harm Namba. Only use what you need and never more. They know how to build wills and gems. They, they knew this before any contact from tens and twenty thousands of years ago. They knew how to make gems, the will, weapons. But the African elders was, was told not to do this. And if a, if a person did do this, a king or a tribe of people, may God have mercy if you did. It's funny, it's crazy because uh, it made sense when I read this because ever since I was a child, I, I felt this connection to nature. And it's something that I know we all have as individuals. But it was, it was more like a spiritual thing. And, and I know you, you felt it before too. It's like a high awareness for, for your surroundings. You eventually learn that we all connected.